Hey, 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 it's good. Get... I'm Alana Dagwell of alanadagwell.com. Let me just fix up my hair a bit. It's always nice to uh, see yourself when you go live, you know, without any time to prepare. Uh, welcome to Get Famous Friday. It's the 13th of November 2015. I discuss the PR highs and lows. Hi, Paul Scott, my old communications lecturer. <laughs> oh, you're making me nervous now. I discuss the PR highs and the lows of the week. Um, and there's been a few this week uh, in the media, both here and in the US. So I'm going to talk about those two. Uh, so here in Australia, as in many countries around the world, Uber is taking a lot of business away from taxi services. In the state of Victoria, here in Australia, the taxi service there started a social media campaign with the hashtag Your Taxis to share per people to share their personal taxi stories. But you know where this is going, right? They were all negative stories. The, the barrage of negative tweets was unbelievable from claims of near sexual assault to um, smelly taxi drivers to receiving lectures on international politics. Like the stories were really, really bad. I'm just going to move away from this door where my daughter is obviously wanting to come in and join me. <laughs> this hasn't happened before. Okay, so... Um, and all the poor Victorian Taxi Association could do was just reply with, you know, tweets that kind of said, thanks for your feedback, we'll note this. And, you know, they were basically just acting as like customer service people saying, you know, your your uh, grievance has been noted and it's not really the campaign that they wanted. So the PR agency has since been sacked and the campaign declared the social media fail of the year by news.com.au. So I feel for taxi services around the world because competition is getting tougher and, and Uber is really slick and trendy and everything like that. But the approach that they needed to take was to show the public the benefits of taking um, a taxi um, in a way where they can control the message. Yes, thank you, Mr. Ahmed. Um, so they can control the message, not just leave it open to the general public to just, you know, say as they will and, you know, control that message and show how you know, the benefits of riding a taxi and, and all that type of thing through advertising, but also through PR as well. So, um, and after seeing all those negative tweets, I'm not quite sure what the benefits of taking a taxi actually are, you know, instead of doing Uber or a private vehicle or something like that. So I think all taxi associations might need to go away and get a town car. Okay, that's that's in New York, isn't it? Yeah, I've heard of that in some movies. <laughs> but what I'm thinking is that... Um, yeah, regroup all the taxi associations, talk about what the benefits are. Is it safety? Is it guaranteed booking? Is it the booking being recorded tracks, you know, that, that helps safety? I don't know, but that is what I'm thinking all of the taxi associations need to do to ward off organisations like Uber, who seem to be slick, reliable, easy with their apps and all that type of stuff to use. So I'll talk a bit more about that later because I think, and if you... <laughs> You sound like you've got some interesting stories there. But I will move to the US now and talk about department store Bloomingdale's, um, who has really, really stuffed up. They came out with their Christmas advertising catalogue that featured the line... I'm just reading some of these Uber ones. I'll, I'll come back and read those later. <laughs> um, the Bloomingdale's catalogue featured the line, Spike your best friend's eggnog while they're not looking. The ad shows a lady looking away and a man looking in her, like looking sheepishly in her direction. And like, when did rendering your friend unconscious at a Christmas party become the festive thing to do? I don't know. It's a terrible form of advertising. I cannot believe it got through all the chains of approval within Bloomingdale's and presumably their ad agency as well. So Bloomingdale's came out with a stock standard PR response saying the copy in the catalogue was inappropriate and in poor taste. Yes, that's what everybody thought. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw that mention about that famous US actor. So um, that was really, really bad for, for, for I mean, the, the, that was a massive PR stuff up, but it just shouldn't have happened, basically, because you just don't put stuff like that in your catalogue. So I'd be interested to see what the fallout is, because I, I take Bloomingdale's to be a high-end, maybe conservative type of department store whose main clientele would be females, I'm guessing. So... Um, 
very um, poor choice of words in their latest catalogue there and their PR response was quite predictable but I guess that's all that they really could um, say. Yes they did Baz, you have said that better than I have. <laughs> so I think that's all from me this week with some PR highs and lows. Um, you can find me uh, at alanadagwell.com on Facebook and you can grab my free Get Famous checklist on my website at alanadagwell.com. Thanks for joining everyone. Love to talk to you. See you next week for Get Famous Friday. Bye.